All righty. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Woodland Hills Baptist Church. So glad you chose to come and, and worship with us this morning. And if you're looking for seats, there's seats over here. Seats, there's still seats back over there, so there's plenty of seats over here. Um, just let you know that, you know, last night I tried something a little bit special. Um, I, I made some fish tacos last night. But I decided when it was all said and done, I think they still like the little sprinkled stuff, the, you know, the little original food. I know, I get him. Uh, this, hey, 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 this is the third time I've been stared at this morning, okay? So you're not the first ones to sit there and stare at me and go, I have no idea what you're talking about. So. All righty. Uh, here's we have some things going on. Like if you're in the if you're a young married, if you consider consider yourself in that uh, 18 to 26, seven year old young married age group, we have a class that meets on Monday nights. They meet tomorrow night at 6:30. They've started a brand new Bible study, so now would be a great time for you to jump in tomorrow evening 6:30. They meet here in the big foyer and just join them and see what that's like. We have a men's golf trip set for the uh, end of this month on Friday, uh, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, 28th, 29th of April. We've got room for a whole lot more people to sign up. It's going to be a lot, of, a lot of fun. So if you're interested in going with that, please ask me any questions or sign up as soon as you can so we can get a count. Annie Armstrong Easter offering. This is an annual thing, and you can see it right behind me. Uh, this all the money goes for North American missions. Every dime given goes directly towards them. There's, um, there's probably some envelopes there. If you want to give today or the next three or four weeks, we're going to take it up for a little bit of time. And our goal is $5,000. So uh, if you want to take part of that, just grab you an envelope and you can do that now or later. We have some summer stuff coming up. Our youth has their summer camp set. So if you're interested in that, talk to Cam. Also, we have a youth mission trip coming up. Vacation Bible School. We have our dates set for that. So if you want to be a part of that, mark your calendar for June 13th through the 17th, our Vacation Bible School. It's a really, really big deal. We have Two, three hundred kids, it seems like. I don't know. There's a lot of them, but we use a lot of helpers, and that's you guys too. So plan on being a part of that. And then the last thing I got is our uh, women's um, spring event, and it's uh, the 1st of May, May 1st, and there's a sign up outside those doors to the right. You can't miss it, a big bouquet of flowers. And ladies, go ahead and get signed up for that. We can get a count, and you can see where you can jump in and help being with uh, being a part of that event. That's what I've got, and so let's go ahead. We have one thing we do is every every Sunday morning we take a few minutes out and we pray for our military uh, men and women who are serving overseas. And as you can see behind me, there's a list of those men and women. And so take a look at that. See if there's a name there that you personally might want to pray for. Uh, we, we're here this morning because of men and women who, are de who have dedicated their lives to helping us have the freedom to be here. So let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Father God. Hello. Father God, this morning, God, we come into your very presence. We come into the very throne room of grace and mercy. And we come in to worship you. We're thankful for all that Christ has done on the cross. We're thankful for the resurrection that we get to celebrate this morning, God. Turn our eyes towards Jesus. Let us hear your truth about how much love, God, that you have for us. Change us today, God. Change our hearts. Let us know Jesus as our Savior. And God, I do pray for these men and women who are overseas. I do pray, God, that your hand of protection will be surrounding them right now. I pray, God, that you have compassion and care for them. You have mercy on them. I pray that Jesus will be real to them today, that someone will speak your name into their lives. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Happy service. Let's all stand. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. song before next week. <laughs> Thank you. Have a seat. Mike, you just wanted to welcome him here really bad. <laughs> now, some of you may need a little attention help today. We have these Easter coloring books with color crayons, and they're in a little basket over there. So if you have young children or anybody or uh, older people, People who are young children, feel free to come up, and I'll put this one here. Somebody can come and get it, or there's more in the basket. Feel free just to come up and get them, and hope, hope you can use them. 
Hosanna. We start to sing in Hosanna. What does Hosanna mean? It means come save us. Come save us. Save us from what? Jesus created, God created, the Holy Spirit created a perfect world. Adam and Eve sinned against God. And ever since then, we have a sin spirit. We don't have to learn how to sin. We do it very, very well without even trying. We just do it. And because of that sin in us, we're not good enough to get to heaven, the Bible says. And so every one of us, we're actually on the way to hell. And we need God to save us from going to hell. And that's what Easter is all about. One of the questions I think we need to ask at Easter is this. Does Easter apply to us? You know, we come, we get, a lot of you look a lot prettier than you did last week. You, you've got dresses and some of you guys are wearing ties, whatever, whatever that is, that, that ancient thing of a tie. And, and some of you look really, really pretty today. We're going to have family get-togethers, we're going to have a meal Maybe hide Easter eggs. Have a good time today. That's good. But see, if Easter doesn't make a difference for tomorrow, if we go to work and school tomorrow and business back as usual, we've, we've lost it. We, we've missed what Easter is all about. Easter needs to not just be a Sunday thing once a year. It needs to affect our lives every single day of our lives. And it can. It can. And it applies to each of us. A lot of people think, you know, that church thing. It's, it's not that church thing. It's a relationship with God. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, the writer says, just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, each of us are going to die. Unless the rapture happens first, each of us are going to die. And then we will face judgment. And the judgment will either be that we didn't know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we are cast away from him forever and ever, or welcome home, my good and faithful servant. That's, that is the judgment. It's one of those two things. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of all people, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. And that's what Easter is all about. It's about the fact that Jesus died for us. In just a moment, we're going to see and hear a song. As you listen and watch this song, I want you to think about John chapter 10. John 10, verses 14 to 18. Jesus is speaking, and he's talking about what that song is. It's going, that song is coming later in his life. But Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Notice how many times in these verses, Jesus says, I lay down my life. Nobody took his life from him. Jesus allowed himself to be arrested. He allowed himself to go through those trials. He allowed them to nail him to the cross and he stayed on the cross because he loves you and because he loves me. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Jesus is talking about his death on the cross and his resurrection. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. As you watch and as you listen to this song, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. He was 
was bleeding from a beating There were stripes upon his back And he wore a crown of thorns upon his head And he bore with every step The scorn of those who cried out for his death chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me down the Via Dolorosa all the way to Calvary Por la Via Dolorosa triste dia in Jerusalem los rayos le abrieron paso a Jesús Mas la gente se acercaba Para ver a quien llevaba aquella cruz Por la vida dolorosa Que es la vida de dolor Como le ha vino Cristo Rey Señor Okay, so Jesus went to the cross. He died. He rose again. What, how does that affect you or me? See, a lot of times I think we, we go through life and we, we come to church and we do all these things, but then we just go on with our life. A few years ago, I was, it was nighttime. I was on the road and weather was getting bad. Somebody called me and said, have you seen a tornado? And I said, no, Why? He said, well, I hear they are around where you're driving through right now. And I said, okay. So I, I get on the radio and I tune into a radio station with the weather and they're talking about how it's, it's calm, it's quiet, it's about 20 degrees warmer than where it was right now. It was in, San, it was in uh, San Antonio. I don't care. I don't care what the weather's like in San Antonio. And then I, I tune in another radio station, a, a weather station, and it's talking about how it's light rain but it's calm and it's in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, I don't care about Atlanta, Georgia. I wanna know what the weather is like where I'm at right now because it's getting scary. See, that's Easter story. It affects every single one of us. And some of us feel like, I think sometimes we feel like it's, it's, it's over there, it's somewhere else. God doesn't 
apply to me. Remember, I, you know, I see our young people today and, and they have so much of life to live for, so many things to look forward to. Remember when I was young, I'd hear the preachers say, boy, you just can't wait till Jesus comes back. And I said, I can. I, there's a lot of things I want to experience before I die. You know, I've got a lot to look, you know, I, I want to do this and this and this. So Jesus, I want you to come back, but just not yet, okay? As I get older, that has changed. Can anybody relate to that? But whether we're old or whether we're young, Easter applies to us because we don't know how long we will be living. And so one day we will stand before a holy God. Romans 5.8 says that God demonstrated how much he loves you and I. That while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Would you think about, does Easter affect my life each day? Or do I just celebrate Easter one day a year?
our glorious King, all His ransom home to bring. Then anew this song will sing, Hallelujah! What a Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. God. You're so good, God, you're so good, God, you're so good, you're so good to me. Behold the suffering Lord I will remember what Calvary has bought for me both now and forever 
God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good. So good to oh, sing it again. God, we thank you that you are good to us and for us. God, we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to a world that would hate him, to a world that would despise him, to a world who would kill him. But God, we thank you that when he went to the cross, he took my sin. He took our sin. And salvation was birthed. And God, you, you give us that free gift. So Lord, today as we stand here and, and we hear from your word, God, we pray that you, that you soften us and that you open the very core of who we are, that we receive that word. And that God, that we realize that you did not just go to the cross and die a death at Calvary, but in fact, you rose from the grave. We are so thankful, Lord, the, the story didn't stop on Friday. God was delivered on Sunday. Lord, we worship you and we thank you that Sunday showed up. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. 
Peter is denied. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday, but let me tell you something, Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know, it's only Friday, Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday, Jesus is buried, a soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's fry. It is only fry. Sunday is a coming. And that's what we celebrate, right? Let's take a look at some people in the Bible who Friday was their life. But Sunday came. And how about you, your life? There's going to be bad things happen. Jesus said, in this world you will have troubles, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Do you live as if it's Friday or do you live as if it's Sunday? The first one, let's take a look. Hope for a new life, John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Jesus has died on the cross. He's been buried. Mary Magdalene and the other ladies have gone to the tomb to anoint his body but his body is gone. Mary Magdalene, the one who Jesus cast seven demons out of. Imagine her life. She had seven demons in her life. Imagine the hell her life must have been. Have you been there? Maybe some of you have been there. Maybe you feel that way now. But Jesus cast those demons out of her and gave her a new life, gave her hope. And so she followed Jesus all the way to the cross and she saw him die and she saw him get buried. And her hope, where's her hope now? He died. He died. John chapter 20, verse 10. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. How could she not have recognized Jesus? Well, first of all, she was crying. 
tears could blur her vision, okay? Did she expect to see a living Jesus? Last time she saw him, he was beaten to a pulp, didn't resemble a human being. He's now healed. She didn't recognize him. Woman, Jesus said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him and I will go get him. And Jesus said to her one word, Mary. Think what that must have meant to her. She recognized Jesus' voice calling her name. Have you ever heard Jesus call your name? If you haven't, ask him today. Can I ask him that? Sure you can. Ask him to call you by name. He knows you and he loves you. you. Say, yeah, but I haven't been followed. He knows you and he loves you. He's calling out to you. Ask him, Lord, I want to hear you call me by my name. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. Now they knew that the body was missing, but nobody had seen him alive yet. She said, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he said these things to her. Mary, who needed hope in life, she was without hope because of her demon possession. And Jesus gave her hope. Do you need hope? Jesus is the giver of hope. Maybe it's a relationship that isn't what you, isn't what you would like it to be. Maybe it's a health. Maybe it's fi finances. Maybe there's something in your life that's come, a Friday that's come into your life, and you need hope that you're going to make it. Jesus is the one to hang on to. You know, it's good to go to church, but don't hang on to church. Hang on to Jesus because he is your strength. He's your help. Then there's another man still living in Friday. His name is Thomas. He's one of the disciples. Thomas left everything to follow Jesus, put his faith in Jesus, Jesus the Messiah, and he saw him die and he saw him buried. His faith is now gone because the Messiah he knew wasn't going to die. And all that he believed in suddenly seemed to be lost. And Thomas, Thomas doesn't know what to do. Look at verse 24, John chapter 20, verse 24. Now Thomas called Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. See, the day Jesus rose from the dead on that Sunday, that evening, he met with the disciples. Jesus appeared with the disciples. They were in a room. Two weren't there, J Judas and Thomas. Where was Thomas? We don't know, but he wasn't there. When the other disciples told Thomas that they had seen the Lord, he declared, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. Have you ever been there? Somebody said, this is the truth, and you say, uh-uh, I don't buy it. I'm not believing that. I don't care what you tell me, I've got to see it to believe it. Those kind of people are from Missouri. They will show me state. I've got to see it to believe it. Thomas was that way. Have you had faith in God at one time? You loved him, but maybe some difficult things came along in life. Maybe some teachers taught you some things and said some things to you and you go, it makes you question whether the Bible is true, whether God is true. And rather than searching it out, you just kind of back off and your faith has taken a hit. That's the way Thomas was. A week later, his disciples, Jesus' disciples were in the house again. This time Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, the disciples are there and he turns to one. He then turned to Peter, James, John, and then he turns right to Thomas. He says, Thomas, put your finger here in my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. 
Can you imagine what Thomas must have been thinking? How did he know? How did he know I said that? He wasn't here. The other disciples were, but he wasn't. How did he know that? Because God knew Thomas. He knew his struggle with faith. And I want to tell you something. God knows you and me. And he knows sometimes when we struggle with faith. Did he chew Thomas out for not being there, for not believing? No. He said, Thomas, see and believe. Stop doubting and believe. And what was Thomas's response? My Lord and my God. All doubt went away. You say, well, if I'd seen something like that, I would have believed too. You know what? God can give you. God can give you what you need to believe. But Thomas was back with the disciples. Had he not been with the disciples, he wouldn't have seen Jesus. Keep seeking Jesus. Keep reaching out to him. Keep learning from him. You say, but my my faith, I, I don't know that I have faith. Let Jesus strengthen your faith. There's another one. John chapter 21, verse 15. You remember Peter, Simon Peter. The night Jesus betrayed and went to the cross. Jesus told Peter, before morning you're going to deny three times that you even knew me. Peter goes, "Uh uh-uh. These other guys, they're wimps. I'm strong, Jesus. I'm going to be with you. Everybody else can turn away from you, but Jesus, I'm going to be with you. I'll never give you up. We know the story. They took Jesus, betrayed Peter followed along behind and three different times they said, hey, you were with that Jesus. Three different times he denied he even knew him. That third time he turned and the Bible says Jesus and him connected eyes and Peter was stricken. Peter, before the morning you will deny three times you even knew me. And Peter went away and wept bitterly. Jesus has died. He's been buried. He's resurrected. He's spending time with the disciples. Look at John 21, 15. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, good. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, um, Son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said, good, good. Take care of my sheep. Then the third time, Jesus said to Simon, but but Simon, one more thing. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. What do you think was going through Peter's mind? I don't know him. I don't know that man. I've never heard of that man. Each time, yes, I love you, Lord. Yes. Have you ever denied Jesus? Man, I have. Remember, I was 13 at a basketball camp. Really wanted to impress these coaches. I was not doing a good job of it. We had these patches with our names on them. My last name is Christian. Christian was on my patch. I just came across something that they chewed me out for on the back of the line. Another, another player's back there, looks at my name tag, says, Christian, are you one? Oh, what a great opening. Now I get to be a witness for Jesus. I just gave him a dirty look and turned away. Is that denying Jesus? Yeah, yeah it is. You ever denied Jesus? He knows. And you know what? He loves you. And he'll reach out to you. Jesus said, Peter, feed my sheep. 
I tell you the truth, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to Peter, follow me. And Jesus and Peter showed Jesus how much he loved him by following him. Was he perfect? No. But he followed him and he loved him. Have you denied Christ? Well, not really, but have you denied Christ? Have there had opportunities to witness to somebody? Did you feel the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to go tell that person about me? I can't do that. They, they don't know me. They'll think I'm crazy. It's called denying Christ. Did God know about that? Yeah, he's the one who told you to go. So he does, would he still love me? Yes, 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 and yes. He's the God of second, third, and 40th chances. He doesn't give up on you. Do you need hope? Do you need stronger faith? Do you need forgiveness? Here are three people that were living in Friday, but Sunday came and gave them hope, gave them a stronger faith, and gave them forgiveness to be one of the great leaders of the church. But one day, Mary Magdalene died. And she stood before a holy God and you know what God said to her? Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. One day Thomas died and he stood before a holy God. And you know what God said to him? Welcome home, my good and faithful servant, in spite of their failures. And then Peter, one day Peter died and he stood before a holy God. And you know what God said? Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. Praise God. Before we go, one more person I want us to look at. Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. Matthew 27, verse 24. Jesus has been arrested. He's being tried. The religious leaders bring them before Pilate. Why? Why Pilate? Pilate's the leader of the Romans. The Jews could not have anyone put to death and they wanted Jesus. The religious leaders wanted Jesus put to death. So they bring him to Pilate and Pilate says, why? He's not done anything worth death. And, and they start crying and yelling and, and Pilate, the one thing he's afraid of is disorder in the city because if he can't handle the city, his bosses will relieve him of his job and probably his life. And so they, he keeps trying Jesus, bringing him out and said, there's nothing wrong with this man. I'll have him whipped and beaten and, and then I'll turn him over to you. And they said, no, we want him dead. In verse 24, when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting. And keep in mind, Pilate's wife even came to him and said, don't have anything to do with this man's death. He's innocent. This is an innocent man. But when he saw an uproar was starting, he took water and he washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. He is your responsibility. And folks, some of us, some of us go through difficult times. We go to church and maybe we don't like what we hear. Maybe different things happen in our lives and it causes us to question, to doubt God. Maybe we see people who are poor examples of Jesus. And we say, I don't want anything to do with that, Jesus. What we're saying is, I wash my hands of Jesus. I want nothing to do with him. Pilate, one day he died. He stood before a holy God. You know what God said to him? Away from me, for I never knew you. Away from me forever and ever and ever. We're all gonna have Fridays. But those who put their faith and trust in Jesus will have Sundays. Do you trust in Jesus, the Son of God, who died on the cross for you, rose from the dead, and today is at the right hand of God, praying and interceding on your behalf? Or do you want to follow Pilate's example and wash your hands and say, I'm not going to have anything to do with this Jesus? 
Does Easter apply? Yeah. And it will. It will then. Do you know Christ is your Savior? Today, if he's calling, would you give him your life? Say, how do I do that? You ask him to forgive you of your sins. Jesus, I know you are the son of God. Come into my life and make of me what I cannot do. Jesus, I need you. And then follow him. Do you know Jesus? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for Jesus. Went to the cross. He was innocent. He took on my sins. He took on our sins. And that was an awful Friday. But then Sunday came. And Father, I pray for that person right now that's living in the Friday and needs a Sunday. And Lord, sometimes you change our circumstances and sometimes you just change us. Your greatest work is sometimes leaving the circumstances as they are, but changing us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace that is sufficient. Lord, we love you. Now speak to us, Father. Speak especially to that one who's simply washing their hands of you because there is an eternal price to pay for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand? We're going to sing. If you know Christ is your Savior, worship as you sing. If you don't know, come. We've got Don over here, Melissa over here. If you'd like someone to pray with you, maybe God will put somebody on your heart out here that you need to pray for or you need to pray with. Just do whatever God tells you to do. While we sing, God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died. To buy my pardon An empty grave is there to prove My Savior lives Because He lives I can face tomorrow 